Hey there. Today, I want to talk about how to get started angel investing. This is part of a whole series of episodes covering the details of the angel investment process, both for people who are interested in becoming angel investors, but also for startup founders who may be interested in understanding that process and the way investors think about making investments. Specifically, this time I want to talk about the process of getting started as an angel investor and some of the things you need to be thinking about and preparing for along the way. Welcome to Feel the Boot, the science of startups. I'm your host, Lance Cottrell, and I'm here to help you become a better angel investor or get started into the process of angel investing. I'm on the board of directors of the North Bay Angels, chair our selection committee, and I've seen thousands of deals. There's a lot of reason why people want to get into angel investing. Many times it's entrepreneurs who've had an exit and now have the cash available to invest in other startups, to give back to the community and to keep a hand in the startup ecosystem. Or it's often people who built up a large nest egg over a career and are looking for alternative kinds of investments. In general, people are also looking for the excitement of being involved in these startups and keeping a hand in that part of the game. There is a huge temptation to jump at the first deals that you see as you start to get into angel investing. It's important to pull back on those reins. These may be tempting, but try to take a disciplined approach. Angel investing is a long game. You're going to be doing this over a significant period of time if you want to be successful and you need to be systematic about your approach. So my first piece of advice is do not actually do any angel investing for a year after you decide you want to get involved. You really need to get a bunch of deals that you've seen so that you can even do any level setting. How do you know what a good deal looks like unless you've seen a whole bunch of bad deals? And so that first opportunity that comes in front of you, there's a chance that it was the best thing that you'll ever see, but the odds are incredibly low. And Angel investing is a statistical game. So make sure that you get a whole bunch of those under your belt before you start deploying cash. In fact, I recommend that you set up a shadow portfolio, right? Imagine you've got some amount of money to invest. And as you're looking at these deals, imagine that you're going to invest in them. Think about how much you might deploy into each one of the companies you see and then start tracking how do they do, right? You're probably not going to track them long enough to see an exit, but are they growing strongly? Are they producing good results, right? Was this a wise decision in context of what you're going to learn over the next year? I encourage you to start small with your investments, really as small as you can to get in. Historically, the smallest investments that most startups would take was about $25,000. Occasionally, you'd see a little bit less, but that was the typical ticket size. And often, the founders will want rather more than that. I've seen a lot of deals where the minimum buy-in is $100,000. When you're getting started, unless money really is no object to you, I would steer away from those because you need to be making a lot of investments. Like I said, this is a statistical game because most of the investments you make are not going to pan out. That's just the reality of angel investing. Most startups fail. So even with careful vetting, most of the startups that you invest in will fail. So the ones that you invest in that win have to win big and to make it probable that one of the companies you invest in will turn out big, you need to invest in a lot of different companies. The rule of thumb is you should be planning to invest over the next several years in at least 20 companies because probably only one in 10 will have a chance of a substantial return. 20 is now giving you pretty good odds that one of those companies will in fact be successful enough to cover your entire portfolio. And this really comes into the whole topic of portfolio theory. I'm going to cover that in another episode. And when each one of the episodes in these series drops, I'll put a link down in the description and a card up above so you can find it. If you're interested in learning more about 
angel investing or startups in general, I encourage you to like this episode that tells YouTube that you're interested in this kind of content and subscribe and ring the bell that will tell YouTube to alert you each time I post new episodes. To really make sure you don't miss out, you should go to feeltheboot.com, I'll put a link down in the description, and join our mailing list. It's called Boot Prints. Uh, it only comes out when I release a new episode, so it's an extremely low volume list, no spam, I never sell the email addresses. It also gives you access to my office hours. So if you wanna talk one-on-one -on -one about startups, founding a company, or angel investing, you can get time on my calendar through there for free. I love to talk to founders and investors. While you're putting together this ghost portfolio and starting to take a look at companies, take pitches, I encourage you to also start working on your investment thesis. What kind of companies do you want to invest in? And that takes a lot of different forms. It could be industry specific. Do you know a lot about advertising or medical or agriculture, mining? Right? What kind of areas do you have special expertise in or special interest in? You may want to focus on those, although many angel investors choose to be sector agnostic. But maybe you're more interested in the kind of technology it is or the sort of business it is. Are you more interested in consumer, direct-to-consumer kind of tech, uh, companies? Are you interested in retail, uh, software as a service, SaaS companies, B2B, hardware companies, things that are based on uh, machine learning? Think about what sort of technologies or areas you believe have the best kind of returns that excite you the most or where you have the most insight. And then you're also gonna to wanna to think about what stage you want to invest in. Angels are usually playing at a pretty early stage, but you could be investing anywhere from the friends and family idea only, right? Something on a napkin kind of stage, through fairly meaningful revenue and good traction, say, late seed stage kind of investing. Where do you feel more comfortable? The returns tend to be bigger the earlier you come in, but so are the risks. Personally, I and most of the angels that I know tend to like to play at the pre-seed to seed stage. So these are companies that have uh, an MVP typically, uh, maybe they're pre-revenue but have good evidence of traction or have some of that initial revenue coming in and are looking to really scale out and perfect their product market fit. Next you want to define your angel investment pool, the block of money, the budget, from which you will end up making angel investments. This needs to be money that you don't need soon and that you're comfortable losing, right? Because as we said, most of these deals will fail. Over your first couple of years of investing, the odds of you getting any returns at all are effectively zero. So you need to understand how much can you afford to invest each year and how much of your total net worth are you comfortable tying up in this kind of investment? Because even for the companies that are successful, you generally won't have any liquidity for five to 10 years. Personally, my startup ran for 13 years. So some of the early investors were in for over a decade before they had a chance to get liquidity and see those returns. It worked out well for them, but Fortunately, none of them needed to access that money for some kind of an emergency expense. So put together that budget and make a commitment to sticking to it. And this is often difficult. I personally suffer with this. I, I've got a budget. I know how much I'm going to spend. And if I've spent the money that I've allocated for this year and a good deal comes along, something that's really tasty, you have to have the discipline to say no or this turns into a slippery slope and suddenly you've way over invested in this sector and it can leave you pretty vulnerable. My next piece of advice for new angel investors is don't lead rounds. The lead investor is typically the largest investor in a round and they're also the one that negotiates the terms for the round. They're negotiating the valuation, with the founder as well as all of the other investment terms and i've done a whole episode on investment terms i'll put a card up there and a link down in the description but that is a highly technical process you really don't want to undertake that without a lot of experience and in fact most angel investors never choose to lead rounds they're always going to follow now they may be willing to do what's called soft circle they'll make a soft commitment to the founder that when someone else comes in 
and writes that larger check and sets the terms for the round, they will participate at that time. But you don't want to be the person trying to negotiate that. That's sort of an advanced level of angel investing. And you're much better off riding someone else's coattails because you get to take advantage of the experience they bring to the table and get the kind of negotiated terms they will ask for that you might not even think of. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful and interesting. And if you did, as I said before, like, subscribe, ring that bell, sign up for Boot Prints. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what other kinds of topics you'd like me to cover. Feel the Boot also now has merch. So if you'd like to come over to the merch store, uh, we've got shirts and coffee mugs and all the usual kinds of stuff with Feel the Boot logos and sayings. And I'd love to hear from you what other kind of content I should put on there. What sort of motivational phrases or sayings or catchphrases from these shows uh, do you think would be useful to you either to let everyone else know the kind of journey you're on or to help motivate you to stay on track. Until next time, ciao.